Well, Barry, I got a question for you. It's based upon this Torah portion. We see that uh, the the lives of the patriarchs and the matriarchs, you know, our forefathers and our foremothers, and well, we did have four mothers in this whole thing. Maybe that's part of the problem we could talk about. But uh, the 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 history goes on with uh, the descendants of this guy that came out of Ur of the Chaldees of Ram, and we're now looking at um, some of his grandkids. And um, <laughs> <laughs> well, the dysfunctional family continues on. And right now, we're focusing this week on Esau and uh, and Yaakov. Um, it, it appears that that though Yaakov has the upper hand in everything, he has the legal right to the covenant, to the uh, to the blessing of the firstborn. He has endured Levon. He's now coming back with. Um, well, a couple of wives, a couple of concubines, and a whole pile of children here. Uh, the boy still has some issues. <laughs> and one of those issues is he's afraid of his brother. Um, do you think that that issue is still alive and well within um, people's lives today? If we could only put all of our adversaries in one bucket and call it the <laughs> devil. Uh, we might feel better, but uh, we know that our, our I guess the only word I know how to use is adversary here, our opponents mm -hmm. are multifaceted. Yeah. And uh, sometimes you go to congregation with them. Um, Esau, in my estimation, represents easy, Mike. Hang in there, bro. I'm glad you were just talking about your congregation, not mine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't have any adversaries in my congregation. Um, <laughs> Throw you under the bus. <laughs> Esau, Esau represents uh, the one who competes for the blessing. Yeah. Those that are carnal, that are religious by ceremony, but not by heart. Well, so, I mean, that that's a broad brush to, to, to paint with. It represents, it represents those that are religious and, a in a, you know, not just um, um, Islam, but also in Christianity and Judaism. If, it's only religion if it's only ceremony if it's only ritual and there's no heart involved uh that's dangerous the most and i've taught this before the most dangerous opponent that we have is unrepentant ephraim okay. unrepentant ephraim will 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 join hands with Esau and compete with ya uh, Yaakov with Israel for the blessing, for the covenant. So do we say that the the spirit of Esau? Okay, and I, I know that when we when we talk do that, you know, you say the spirit of, and and all of a sudden you get the people rolling their eyes and the the hooey kind of stuff. But um, there there is a there is a spirit of Esau that is at work in in the world today. A group, a, a people um, that that are controlled by this spirit. Uh, I'm going to go to what you just said of they desire the blessing of the covenant, but they do not desire the responsibility of the covenant of that which comes with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it's like let's let's go to the um, let's go to the current war. All right. Wow, that'd be a, an interesting topic to talk about. I'd hardly ever talk about that. Um, let's, go, let's look at the current war with Gaza. In 1948, there were approximately 80,000 Arabs living in the area of this now referred to as Gaza Strip. Uh, in 2023, there are some 2.1 million of them uh, 
who for the last uh, 18 years have been given pretty much sovereign control over that land. There's, you know, I, I, for the life of me, I can't figure out what this is about in that the, the seemingly smart people usually aren't. Okay. I, I'm just kind of throwing that out. Um, what is it that the Palestinians in Gaza for the last 18 years didn't have? All right, they, they didn't have uh they didn't have IDF soldiers in Gaza. Uh they they didn't have Jewish control in Gaza. They didn't have synagogues in Gaza. Uh well they did until they, they destroyed them. Uh there was really no Jewish influence in Gaza, except for the fact that the people in Gaza were going into or going out of Gaza so they could get work because there was no work in Gaza because of Hamas. And so, so what, what was the issue? That they, they didn't have a title deed? I mean, they had been given the land, but in the end, they, they wanted the land, but they didn't want the responsibility of the land. It's not that they really wanted it. They just they Esau's issue is I don't really want this covenant. I don't really want the blessings that come with the covenant, but I sure don't want my brother to have them. And so so I'll just I'll just make sure that 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 he doesn't get it. And I and if if need be, I'll kill him so that he can't get it. Is does that kind of simplify a lot of this stuff well if we go back to the the incident where the blessing was was offered or presented uh yitzhak looked at uh yaakov and he said to him yah give you the um uh, dew of the heavens and the fatness of the earth, plenty of grain and wine. Let peoples serve you, nations bow down to you, be master over your brothers. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Let your mother's sons bow down to you. Here's the other problem. Cursed be those cursing you, and blessed be in those blessing you. He says to Esau, buy your sword, you're to live, and serve your brother. And it should be when you grow restless that you break his yoke from your neck. He opened the door. Esau, you can break his authority over you. And that was the one caveat, the one saving moment in Esau's mind. He, he, he uh, hated Yaakov, it says. And it says here that the, when the days of mourning for my father will draw near, then I'm going to kill my brother. If I kill, if he kills Yaakov, then he's next in line to receive Yaakov's blessing. In Esau's mind, then Yaakov's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's still the worldview right now. Israel is the problem. If we just, Gaza says it as well. If we get rid of Israel and drive them out of the land, then we have resolved our problem. The problem is for them that the land that Israel now occupies, uh, occupies the Roma, now dwells in, mm -hmm. would look like Gaza in short time. You know, if, it, oh, yeah. if we th if the world thinks that the the poor quote-unquote Palestinians that have been put upon by Israel, if they were just given the land, they could go in and they could take over the industries, they could take over the technology, they could take over the commerce, they could live in the homes. It would look like a slum village within a few years because, number one, they're not, they're not willing uh, to, to train themselves or allow their people to be trained. Hamas is all about violence. They're not about building society. They're not about education. They're not about creating jobs. No. Billions upon billions of dollars have been 
funneled into that little place, that little strip of land, and it sits in leadership's bank accounts who live like kings. Yeah. So yeah, it, it sits in the leaders who are in Qatar. So when we Mike, when account. we look at this, Israel is still the problem. The United Nations say Israel's the problem. Oftentimes the US White House and governments say, Israel, you're the problem. There was a news headline that came out yesterday, I believe it was, that the White House is saying that after the conflict is over, Hamas must still be left in power. Yeah. Uh, that cannot happen, or else this is all for nothing. Esau is not just, however, in, found in the Arabic community. There is a partnership. Mm -hmm. Esau went and married into the family of Ishmael. If you ask the rabbis, they will say that Esau is Edom, which the scripture supports, and that Edomites are the foundation of Rome, and by extension, the Roman professional religious system, however that manifests in the earth. That is not saying that everyone who is calling themselves a Christian and goes to church on Sunday morning is Esau. We're not saying that. However, there are religious systems stemming, stemming from Rome that are. Again, if yeah. it's all about professional religion, that's Esau. And professional religion Rome uh, partners with Ishmael, and they will stand against Yaakov as the days continue. Just like you know, there's uh, there's condemnation from the Vatican, and an embracing of the Vatican with with Mecca or uh, the Ayatollahs or whoever, uh, or with Hitler. There is a partnership there. Yeah. As long as those two are out on the horizon, Israel will always be the target. Always. Well, I'm just, I'm just kind of backing up before I forget this. I'm, I'm waiting for John Kerry, uh, you know, the infamous uh, person that dry, that flies around all over the place and and teaches us about global warming. Uh, I'm just really surprised that he hasn't come out with a statement that the reason for global warming is Jews breathe. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's there's you laugh, but there's a lot of truth in that. That uh, people yeah. think the reason for all the problems in the world is that because is because Jews breathe, uh, and this is this is demonic. Okay, this is absolutely demonic because it's all about the covenant. It's all about. I've been teaching on this a lot about his word and is did he. You know, is is the Almighty a liar or not? That's that's what it all comes down to. In in the end, uh, this marriage between Esau, uh, Ishmael, we throw in Rome and Mecca and all of this. I just I, I just got a message. It's at the uh, it'll be available next day or two. Uh, I changed the title, Barry. Okay, you'll be proud of me. Um, I did change the title. I didn't change the message, but I changed the title, and it is uh, it is the baggage of history, because we need to understand the history that has been uh, Catholicism, much of Christianity through the years, that is based upon Esau, that is based upon the spirit of Esau. Um, I just quoted to Hanok, uh, we were talking about this, uh, I just got, I just recorded with him. That, um, you know, when you have a person who tacks the thesis to the Wittenberg Castle Church and says the just shall live by faith, and then his his next breath is uh, the, the kindred of Christ burn in hell and they are rightfully served, Barry, that's the spirit of Esau. And much of Judaism sees Christianity as Esau. Mm-hmm. And because they've been reading the Torah longer than we have, they see that the kiss, uh, when, when Esau went to kiss Jacob, that it actually was, that he was, he, it was like fangs. 
that he wanted to bite the into the neck of Jacob. And so this is why it's so important for us to understand the history of Christianity toward our Jewish brothers and sisters today. Uh, with all that being said, you and I believe that we are grafted in, mm -hmm. adopted into the family of Jacob, who would whose name is is now to be called Israel. Okay, which means that at the end of this Torah portion, uh, at the death of Isaac, the war was not over because Jacob and Esau went their own way. And Esau, the, the fight that is happening is prophetically through Jacob and Esau. So my question to those of us who are into the family called Israel are we still afraid of the spirit of Esau? As this story unfolds in Genesis or Bereshit 33, Yaakov sends over blessings of flocks and herds, and then he puts families and segments, and they come, and they're bowing to the ground. And then Yaakov himself comes and he keeps bowing down to the ground, which is a very painful process now that his hips out of joint. Mm -hmm. Esau's temperament changes from I'm going to kill you to an embrace. As you were talking a minute ago, what came to me, Mike, is that as long as we are appeasing in gifting Esau, as long as they feel like they're getting something from us, they will tolerate and work with us until they come to such place that they can take it from us. They, they will receive it until they have to take it. As long as we're giving, you know, you... Uh, You've told the story to me on several occasions over the years of going to, you know, a, a nominal congregation and you might teach on Shabbat or the Talit or the Shafar or a Passover Seder demonstration. And there is moderate appreciation. And I remember you told me years ago when you were still on a more traveling circuit style of ministry. If you go and you share, if you see one light bulb go off in the group, that's a major accomplishment. Yeah. More often than not, what you get is, oh, that was nice. That was that was interesting, and that was nice. Is it life changing? You enjoyed your talk, no. preacher. I saw the grin on your face there. <laughs> yeah. We 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 appreciate your. We I enjoyed your talk, preacher. <laughs> <laughs> so uh you're not going to change Esau from being Esau because though he cries, though he gets emotionally attached, Hebrews says, Yah will not forgive him. Why? Because Yeshua told us in Matthew 6 that unless you forgive, neither will you be forgiven. Esau has never forgiven. Yaakov, and therefore he cannot be forgiven. If that's case, if that's the case, Mike, we can't be intimidated by him when Yah has rejected him. Esau's problems are not because of us. Israel right. is not the world's problem. The world has their own problems. And they're they're looking for a scapegoat. If one is asking, so I don't understand why anyone in a sitting on a pew in a congregation somewhere, why are they the problem? Here's the main umbrella of which that system has a a um, a claim against it. It's called. Supersessionism. 
a better understood term is replacement theology. Yeah. Anytime the pulpit declares that that which is called the church has now replaced Israel and all the covenant and benefits and promises and prophecies made to Israel now belong to the church because the Jews rejected Yeshua. That's a demonic lie. Yeah. It is a demonic lie. It is heresy. It is false doctrine. And that's the issue. And those that are of the house of Judah, that's their main issue. Is that the church, the professional church, has come in and told them, unless you become us, you're going to die and go to hell. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, replacement theology, that's a, that's a whole subject. and That's Esau's you know, this, doctrine. Yeah, and, and if, you look at the, if you look at the pre-tribulation rapture, uh, that's basically replacement theology doctrine, okay? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Now, here's, I want to go back to something you brought up, a verse uh, that, you know, talks about when uh, Esau, you know, casting off the yoke. Esau's problem is that the yoke that is upon Esau's neck is a yoke of blessing. And if if Esau will submit to that yoke, Esau will walk in blessing. But what Esau thinks is what e, what is a blessing Esau sees as a burden. So when we go to the Esau religion, Esau influenced religion with the instructions of Torah, which bring forth blessing, Esau sees it as bondage. Yeah. Okay. So in order to to try to do to to bridge the, instead of instead of Jacob standing up and when I say Jacob, I'm talking about us. Instead of Jacob standing up and saying, no, Esau, this is what has happened. Remember, I purchased the birthright. Uh, I, I, you know, there was no deception here. I purchased that birthright, and you never wanted it. And so the way to blessing is through me. Instead of doing that, Whoa, 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 Jacob whoa, tries. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold, hold. Okay, what you just said. The way to blessing is not the yelling a verse in the middle of the air. It's not making a decree or a declaration or a profession. The way to blessing is through the house of Israel, the house of Jacob. That's where uh -huh. the covenant blessing has been given. And if you want that blessing, that's where you need to go. That's, I'm not saying you convert to Judaism. That's not what we're saying. No, no. no. The, it's the I, I covenant. Mean, it, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you submit yourself to the covenant that's been given through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Abraham, Ishmael, not Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. It is the covenant that's available through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're submitting to the same the, the same covenant that was given to Abraham originally. Uh, maybe we can go into a whole program on that. So in, instead of standing up to his brother, he appeases. And this this word, I, I just go over it over and over this word every year, appeasement. Um so far, we've been sailing pretty easily on the on the lake here, Barry. You know, our, our boat's dry on the inside. Um, <laughs> nice, gentle breeze. Well, I can't stand that too long, so we're going to take on water, y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Start bailing. I just was talking to Hanok about Hanukkah. 
And 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 this came from this is a question that came from Kathy last night. With the with the current war going on in Israel, she had, was how to celebrate. Hostages being held, over 150 hostages still. Mike, Mike, yeah. you froze up. Mike, okay. go back to Kathy asked the question. Okay, yeah, I saw that, it, that my computer told me I was, un, it said the internet was unstable. I think it was talking about me. Um, so Kathy asked a question of what would what is Hanukkah going to be like this year in Israel? And um, I know there are people who are, you know, going to be celebrating and having parties in America. I'm not, I'm not against that. It's just we were talking about this that we just don't feel a party mode. There's a heaviness. Mm -hmm. There's a 24 seven heaviness over, over my life right now. It's different than COVID. I mean, there was one for a long time there, but this is different. I have I have friends that are that are in uniform on the front lines of Gaza uh in Bethlehem. I know these people. I I, I can't just go have a party right now. And so I asked Hanok, I said, What you know, what's gonna be different? He says, listen, Mike, he said the 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 the, the truth is that Hanukkah is different in America than it is in Israel in any way. He said, we don't have, we, you know, you don't go to, to the, the store and buy Hanukkah plates and, and Hanukkah ribbons and decorations. And, you know, he, he said, there, there's, there's a little bit that's done, but he said, mainly it's just the lighting of the candles. He said, you don't get invited to all these parties everywhere. He says, and it just, it dawned on me. And, and this is where I'm going to probably make a few enemies a, along the way. And has has Hanukkah, American Hanukkah, the celebration, the decorations, the gifts, the the all the stuff that's being thrown at it, is our modern day observance of Hanukkah an appeasement? to Esau's Christmas. Nah, I can't argue with that. And it's almost as if, Mike, we can't help ourselves because we have become so conditioned to certain mindsets, not just actions, but certain mindsets at this time of the year. You know, we... Um, uh, we don't want the children to feel uh, left out, and so thank you, you know, Nancy Pelosi. All that kind of thing it's about the children. It's about the children. Um, the question goes back to what we asked at the beginning: Is Yaakov, is Israel, afraid of or intimidated by Esau? Fear does not always uh, come in a military confrontation. Sometimes it's just a cultural, a yeah. lack of a lack of cultural acceptance. We don't want to be different. We don't want to be unique. Another way of saying that is we don't want to be set apart. Oh, kaboom! Yeshua said. Uh, and I used this verse in a 10 minute Torah yesterday. Let me get to it real quick. In the book of John, chapter 15. He says, If the world, in verse 18, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own, but because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, for that reason, the world hates you. If you go over to chapter 17, he says, 
They are not of the world in verse eight, uh, 16, as I'm not of the world. Set them apart in your truth. Your word is truth. Kepha, Shimon Kepha says, submit yourself first to Yah. Then resist the devil and he will flee from you. You can stand and rebuke Esau and threaten Esau and lambast Esau if you want to, but if you're not submitted and set apart first, it doesn't do any good. So, mm -hmm. Mike, we have heard for many, many years now teaching on the threat of the Nephilim showing up and giants ruling the earth and Manchurian candidates and all of that kind of thing. The last time that they were on the earth, Israel destroyed them. David took out one with a rock. So, I mean, they're, you know, even if they do show back up on the earth, the last time they were here, it didn't fare well for them. They died. Obadiah, Ovijah, in verse 18 says, The house of Yaakov shall be a fire, and the house of Yosef a flame, but the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall mm -hmm. burn among them, and they shall consume them, so that no survivor is left of the house of Esau. For Yahweh has spoken. Esau, however he is manifested, revealed, uh, however he operates, whatever uh, entities are influenced by his spirit and his heart, it's going to be destroyed, and it's going yeah. to be destroyed at the hand of Israel. Ultimately, that small sliver of land in the middle of the uh, middle of the earth is going to rule the earth. Now you can, you know, I, I was. I know it means nothing to you, but the other, day, other night I was watching uh, a football game, just a little bit at the end of it. And um, it got down Sorry. to where I thought, okay, game's over. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for one side, and they're down by one point, and they blow it. it. There's just a couple minutes left in the game. The other team's got the ball. They're on the wrong, you know, too close to scoring. I said, it's over now. So I turned the channel. Out of curiosity, I checked to see what the score was. The team I was pulling for had come back and won. Just, they made a stand defensively. They got the ball back. They ran it down the field. They kicked the field goal, and they won the game. Don't count out Israel. The world, will, all of the earth, will eventually align against Israel, and all hope will soon yes. seem to be lost. But Israel, unbeknownst to themselves, have a, a major winning hand stuck up their sleeve. Yeah. And that is that the sovereign of the earth says, I will defend them. I will come and rescue them. I will deliver my people. And he will do so. Choose no doubt today in my mind. who you want to serve. Let me let me finish up with this, and I, I agree with you, uh, except for I don't care anything about football. Um, <laughs> you know, the, usually the team that I that I watch loses. You know, the, if I want to, all you have to do is have me want a team to win. They're going to lose. Okay, so I just don't even I don't even bother. <laughs> but uh, let me go back to my statement, and I'll close with this regarding. Hanukkah versus Christmas. Barry, the truth is that in Jacob, there are two houses, the house of Ephraim and the house of Yehuda, Judah. Both are influenced by their appeasement of Esau. Modern-day Hanukkah. I'm not telling people not to have a good time on Hanukkah. Modern-day Hanukkah in America where we got our observances from is from modern-day Jewish-American 
observance, which is which was originally an appeasement to Esau. The reason for the gifts and all the stuff that was done, we can go back and see that this was originally not the intent of Hanukkah. But in America, the children had Chris, the, the Christian children had Christmas. We got to come up with something. And so much of what we had passed down to us regarding our observances of some of the festivals, including Hanukkah, is from an Esau appeasement spirit. It's time for us to shake off that spirit. Should we celebrate Hanukkah? I believe so. But should our, our, our focus be on a battle and a victory instead of on meaningless, trivial things. So all I'm doing is asking people this year, yes, observe. The same as you would Veterans Day. The, the same as you would uh, for, for um, you know, yeah, Veterans Day. That, that's that's how, kind of how I teach it. You know, it, Veterans Day in America has become about mattress sales. And most of us that are veterans, that turns our stomachs. Would our modern day observance of Hanukkah turn the stomach of the original Maccabees because of what it's been turned into? The Maccabeans. Revolt has come to mind a few times, thinking of uh, men giving their lives in battle, women uh, heroically resisting the Greek influence, maintaining observance in their home under the threat of death, circumcising their sons when it was forbidden to do so. Uh, and that didn't, you know, this was not a two month war. It went on and on and on. So uh, it's very similar to what's going on right now. Yep. Read Hebrews 11. That might be the spirit that we're supposed to have, a spirit of faith. And um, yeah, it could be it's time for a Maccabean revolt against the Maccabean celebration. <laughs> I'm going to leave y'all with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, folks, for watching. Thank you for sharing in your social media. Thank you for your questions, your comments. And most of all, thank you for your support and prayers. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you again yes. next week. Take see you, care, Barry. <laughs>